hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel in today's tutorial we're creating a very beautiful vicky james design you've seen the inspiration and you have also seen the outcome without further ado let's just proceed to the tutorial one important take home will be how to do inseam finishing the only part of the top that i did not do inseam finishing was when i was trying to attach the sleeve and that was because i was out of time so you will just learn how to do inseam finishing for the main bodies okay so let's just proceed the first thing i went ahead to do was to mark out my starting line so i came down from the top of the paper by one inch and i ruled a straight line I went ahead to label that line shoulder line after that i went ahead to mark my shoulder to bust which is 10 my shoulder to under bust which is 14 and my shoulder to waist for my front which is 17 you know a shoulder to waist for the front is different from the shoulder to waist from the back due to the presence of the bust or the breast in front i know most of us use the same thing for both the front and the back including me but for this top to get the type of fit that you want okay i like to use the different shoulder to waist for both the front and the back the next step is to mark the length of top you would want i decided to use 24 so i went ahead to mark 24 you can use 25 26 you can even do 23 depending on what you want in order for me to get a straight line i went ahead to mark that 10 14 17 and 24 again so that by the time i connect the points i'm able to get a straight line after connecting the points to form a straight line, I went ahead to label the lines, bust point, under bust, waistline and top length. The next step is to mark my shoulder width divided by 2. My shoulder width is 16. 16 divided by 2 is 8 which i went ahead to mark then i proceeded to mark the basic neck width which is three inches we're still going to change that later okay so i'm going to mark my shoulder slope which is 1.5 inches obviously we know our shoulder is not straight so i'm going to go down by 1.5 inches then i would make use of my ruler to connect from my 1.5 inch shoulder slope to my three inch neck width the next step is to form our armhole curve and in order to do that i would have to calculate my armhole line and that is gotten by dividing your bust circumference by 6 plus 1.5 inches my bust circumference is 39 39 divided by 6 plus 1.5 inches gives me 8 so from the shoulder slope area i'm going to come down by 8 inches after marking 8 inches, I'm going to roll that out into a straight line. In order to form an armhole curve, I'm going to measure the same thing I marked as my shoulder width divided by 2, which is 16 divided by 2. That's 8. I'm going to measure what I have there and I'm going to place it on this line. 8 inches and I'm going to mark that as well. And I'm going to proceed to form a straight line next i'm going to find the midpoint of that eight inches which is four i'm going to mark that on that four inch point i'm going to go in by 0 0.5 inch that's half inch to finally form the armhole curve i am going to divide my bust circumference which is 39 by 4 39 divided by 4 gives me 9.75 which is what i'm going to take and mark on the armhole line next i'm going to take my curve and connect just as shown i'm going to connect from the shoulder slope to the 0 0.5 inch we went in by and finally connect to the 9.75 and that forms the armhole curve basically the next step is to mark our dart and our dart is obtained by dividing our bust span or nipple to nipple by two my nipple to nipple or bust span is eight eight divided by two is four which is what i marked on the waistline i'll take that same four inches and mark it on the bust point line after which i would also go to the top length line and mark that same 
four inches after which i'll take my ruler and connect into a straight line after connecting into a straight line the next step is to mark our dart intake for bust 35 inches and below use one inch bust 36 to 40 inches use 1.5 inches bust 40 inches and above you can use two inches my bust circumference is 39 which falls between the 1.5 inches so i'm going to divide that 1.5 inches by 2 1.5 divided by 2 gives me 0 0.75 so i'm going to mark 0 0.75 on both sides of the line okay that is my dart intake and it's going to give me a very good fit just like you saw on the top or on the blouse when i wore it so i'm going to be using 1.5 inch so now i'm going to determine how long i want my dart to be for this one i'm going to come down from the bust point by one inch you don't want your dart to always get to your bust point so that it doesn't give you that pointy look okay so just come down from your bust point by one inch and connect just as shown okay so i'm going to connect from that one inch point to the 0 0.75 that i mapped on both sides of the line okay so the next step is to decide how long I want my dart to be from the waistline and I decided to use 5 inches. Then I went ahead to connect the points just as shown. The next step is to divide your waist circumference by 4. My waist circumference is 30. 30 divided by 4 gives me 7.5. So I went ahead to mark that 7.5. I proceeded to measure what I marked as my dart, okay, which is 1.5, and I marked that as well. The next thing I divided was my hip circumference divided by 4. My hip circumference is 42. 42 divided by 4 gives me 10.5 which is what i went ahead to mark and i proceeded to connect from the armhole to the waistline from the waistline to the top length line at the beginning of the tutorial i mentioned that the shoulder to waist for the front is different from the shoulder to waist for the back because of the presence of the bust or breast at the front so it implies that the front shoulder to waist is usually longer than the back shoulder to waist my front shoulder to waist is 17 my back shoulder to waist is 14.5 so in order to get our bust that we have to subtract our front shoulder to waist from the back shoulder to waist 17 minus 14.5 gives me 2.5 that is my bust that from the bust point line i'm going to come down by that 2.5 inches i got and mark and i'm going to use my ruler to connect from that point to the nipple point on the bust point line the next step is to work on the neckline for the neckline i decided to change the neck width from three to four so i went ahead to mark four inches you could do 4.5 or you can maintain three inches but i wanted the neckline to not be too close to my neck so i decided to do four inches from that four inch point i went down by five inches okay this um measurement i'm calling are not fixed okay these are the things i decided to use so i went down by five inches on that five inch point i went ahead to mark four inches again this is because i wanted to get a straight line okay so on that five inch point i marked four inches and i used my ruler to connect to form a straight line next i decided to form the sweetheart part of the neckline by going down from the center front by 7.5 inches if you don't want your cleavage to show do 7 6.5 more cleavage you can do 8 9 depending on what you want so i marked 7.5 inches and i used my curve to connect the point just as shown the next step is to separate the shoulder from the body as you can see from the style on the screen a part of the shoulder was separated from the bodies and twisted so what i did was to come down from the shoulder by five inch which i marked please note that that five inches is exactly what i marked at the other side where the arrow is pointing so you know you have to just replicate it that way the next step is to connect the point to form a straight line when we are cutting out we are going to separate that part of the shoulder from the main bodies the next step is to divide your shoulder into two equal halves what i just did was to fold my tip into two to get the midpoint and from that midpoint i'm going to use my meter rule to connect from that point to the nipple point on the bust point line we still have a few more things to do on the front bodice pattern but we will not be able to do them until we cut out our front pattern so i'm going to leave that aside and proceed to draft out the back part of the bodies which won't take us a lot of time 
the first thing I'm going to do is to mark from my shoulder to bust which is my bust point and that is 10 inches we don't need a shoulder to under bust for this part so I'm going to proceed to mark my shoulder to my waistline for the back and like I said earlier your front shoulder to waist is different from the back shoulder to waist and it is shorter so my back shoulder to waist is 14.5 inches please ignore the 14 i marked at first that was a mistake my back shoulder to waist is 14.5 i'm going to proceed to mark the top length as well note that since your back shoulder to waist is shorter than your front shoulder to waist your top length will also be shorter remember there is no breast at the back like i said earlier so what i do to know what to use as my back top length i would subtract my front shoulder to waist from the back shoulder to waist that is 17 minus 14.5 which gives 2.5 okay and now my front top length is 24 what i just do is to subtract you know 2.5 from that 24 so 24 minus 2.5 gives 21.5 that is what i'm going to use as my back top length very easy so i'm going to proceed now to mark all the points again just to get a straight line like i always say i'm going to use my meter rule to connect all the points to form a straight line after that, I'm going to proceed to mark my neck width, which is 3 inches. Then I'm going to divide my shoulder width, which is 16 by 2, which is 8 inches. And I'm going to come down for my shoulder slope by 1.5 inches. Just like we did for the front, I'm going to connect with my meter row from the 1.5 inch shoulder slope to the 3 inches neck width okay remember the eight inches armhole we calculated for the front i'm going to use the same thing for the back so from the shoulder slope i'm going to measure eight inches then i'm going to proceed to connect the point into a straight line i'm going to quickly label the lines bust point waistline and top length okay i also went ahead to label the armhole line after which i went ahead to measure what i have on my shoulder which is eight inches i marked the same thing on the armhole line and i connected to form a straight line in order to form the back armhole curve i went ahead to divide what i have on this point into two that is find the midpoint so eight divided by two is four which i marked and i divided my bust circumference which is 39 by four which gave 9.75 which is what i marked next i went ahead to form the back armhole curve using my curve just as shown the next step is to form the back neckline i decided to use a back neck depth of 1.5 inches after which i used my curve to connect the points to form the neckline the next step is to get rid of zipper bulge at the back bodies and there are two things i do all the time to totally get rid of zipper bulge the first is to go in on the waistline by 0.75 that 0.75 is not constant for everybody if you're on the slimmer side you could do 0.5 and if you're on the plus size side or you have a bigger bum you could do one inch okay or if you just feel like your back waistline is deeper you could do one inch but 0 0.75 works perfectly for me after marking that 0 0.75 on the waistline i'm going to use my curve to connect just as shown next i'm going to mark my dart from that zipper bulge point on the waistline in order to mark my dart i'm going to divide my bust span or nipple to nipple by two 8 divided by 2 is 4. So from the zipper bulge point, I'm going to mark 4 inches, okay? So for me to get a straight line, I'm going to measure from that 4 inch point to the edge of the paper, okay? Which is about 4.75. So that's what I'm going to mark as my dart on the bust point line and on the top length line. And I'm going to connect the point to form a straight line. Just like the front, I'm going to take a dart of 1.5 inch which means i'm going to mark 0.75 on each side of the line okay but i am not going to connect the dart yet because once we carry out the second step that will help us get rid of zipper bulge the lines are going to become slanted so what i'm going to do is we're going to form our dart properly later okay the next step is to divide our waist circumference by 4 30 divided by 4 is 7.5 i am going to take that measurement from the zipper bulge that we went in by okay and i'm going to measure my dart which is 1.5 and i'm going to mark that okay 
the next step is to divide my hip circumference by 4 42 divided by 4 is 10.5 and i'm going to mark that as well and i'm going to use my ruler to connect all the points next i'm going to carry out the second step that will help us totally get rid of zipper bulge like i mentioned earlier i am going to go up on the waistline by 0.75 and i'm going to come down as well from the waistline by 0.75 and connect just as shown like i said earlier this 0.75 is not constant it depends on a variety of things especially the depth of your waistline at the back or how big your bum bum is basically but that depth of waistline at the back is what really influences what you would use okay next you're going to cut through the waistline just like you see me doing and we are going to cut off that dart at that point then we'll use a cello tape to join both piece together you would notice that the dart line is slant that is why i do not really appreciate marking your dart at that point i prefer to mark my dart later when i'm done carrying out this step okay so now i hope you understand why you should mark your dart after carrying out this step looking at the side of the top of the screen you can see that it's a little curved i decided to go up on the side by three inches this is not fixed you can do two you can even do 3.5 depending on what you want the next step is to connect the point using your curve you can use any part of the curve to give it whatever shape you desire the next step is to create the v shape at the front of the top okay so on the top length line i'm going to go in by 0.5 inch then i would also come down from the waistline by 1.5 inches then i'll proceed to connect with my curve just as shown just to ensure that the sides seem aligned i'm also going to go up at the side by three inches on the back pattern this is very very important if not the side seam will not align okay i'm just trying to ensure that the measurements align so that when i join the front to the back everything is going to align perfectly okay i'm also going to use my curve to connect as i please so use your curve to connect it to whatever shape you like the front and the back shape do not have to be the same the next step is to go ahead to straighten the back that just like i had explained earlier okay as you can see the that is a little slant and now we have to straighten it so that is exactly what i'm doing i am going to proceed to take 0.75 on each side of the line and i'm going to connect just as shown the length of the dart from the waistline is four inches so i marked four inches i went ahead to connect the point just as shown the next step is to label the patterns a and b after which i went ahead to separate a from b just as shown after separating a from b it is important that you label all the parts the shoulder the side okay so that by the time you cut it out on your fabric you will not be confused as to where the shoulder is the side you know all of that after doing that the next step is to slash b open from the shoulder line just as shown then i will proceed to close my bust dart okay close your bust dart adjust the side line with your ruler properly if the line is not like straight just make it straight to your ruler and then proceed to use your cello tape to hold that bust dart in place from the inspiration on the screen you can see that there's a bit of pleat at that part where the arrow is pointing and we'd have to introduce those pleats by doing slash and spread before i go ahead to introduce the slash and spread i'm just going to quickly cut out my front pattern totally as this will make it very very easy for me after cutting out my front pattern i went ahead to cut out a piece of paper and i placed it under the shoulder area next i went ahead to divide what i had on the shoulder into three equal parts okay after dividing that into three equal parts i proceeded to connect the point with my ruler to touch the bust line okay next i went in with my scissors to slash through the lines so that i can spread the points evenly so just like i said at this point i was trying to evenly spread the point and i used my cello tape to hold them in place okay so just try your possible best to evenly spread your point and use your cello tape to hold it in place okay after doing my slash and spread the next step is to pleat everything back okay so as to enable me cut off the shoulder so i went ahead to pleat everything back i used my cello tape to hold each pleat in place okay after forming my pleats, I'm going to bring in my ruler and my pencil to form a straight line at the shoulder. And that will make it very easy for me to know where to 
cut out okay so once i've cut out the shoulder area i would also trim off every excess paper i can find there okay and i would remove my cello tape to reveal the pleats and that's exactly how i'm going to place it on my fabric to cut out okay next i'm going to proceed to also trim out the back pattern okay and there's something we've not done remember the neck width we used for the front is four inches i'm also going to you know increase the neck width for the back to four inches and just connect just as shown it is very important that your neck width aligns so that your shoulder can align when you're joining it okay so i'll just proceed to cut everything out including the zipper bulge that we took out after doing that i have also gone ahead to draft my basic sleeve so any basic sleeve you have is fine so guys we've come to the end of the cutting part of this tutorial in our next tutorial i'm going to show you how to cut everything on fabric and how to stitch all the pieces together to form this top i'll see you in the next one bye